first, uh, well, first, can I say you guys have uh, like my favorite library ever? The Kindle Library is amazing. I got a tour this morning. You've all been there, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm super jealous. We have a nice library where I'm from, but it is nothing like your library. Like the setting, the park, and the lake. Are you kidding me? I cannot imagine a better place to play and to write, and to read, and to create. Um, so thanks for the tour today. It was really cool. Uh, you're very lucky to have. And a library, you know, a library, I think, is the heart of a community, right? And in a school, the school library is the heart of the school, the place where everybody comes together. It feels that way in your library. Um, oh, also, <coughs> hello. Uh, thank you for inviting me here tonight. <laughs> uh, I would like to uh, thank the Kleiman family and the Kendallville Public Library and the parents and the teachers and all of you writers uh, for having me here tonight to talk about writing and illustrating and books and stuff. Thanks for having me as your guest. Um, it is an honor to speak to my fellow Indiana writers. Eh? Um, I have been looking at your stories over the past few days, and uh, I'm kind of blown away, right? There's fiction and nonfiction and poetry and stories about dogs and cats and spaceships and math and rainbows and robots, and chickens, and monsters, and baseball, and tacos, and pizza, and monkeys, and unicorns, and underpants. <laughs> so you, are, you guys are my kind of writers. Um, and I'm, I was blown away, right? I'm bowled over by your intelligence and your creativity. Um, and I'm excited to work with you. We're going to do a little work together tonight. Um, so if it's okay with you, before we do that, I'll talk a little bit about my books and the way that I write them, and then after that, we'll make up our story together. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna ask you guys before we start, I have a few standard questions I ask every group. How many of you like to read? Good. How many of you like to draw pictures? Good. How many of you like to make up stories? And how many of you like to raise your hand? <laughs> good. Okay, we will do all four of those things. This is going to be a little interactive, uh, so when I call you, please raise your hand and help out. You're going to help me figure out what you're going to talk about tonight. All right, well, my name is Troy Cummings. Um, I got my start uh, when I was in second grade. There was me as a kid. I am from Newcastle, Indiana. That's where I grew up. It's about three hours from here. Uh, I know. Uh, I lived in the woods. I had this long bus ride to school. At the time, I did not like that bus ride, but now I realize that bus ride is where I got my start. On the bus every day, I would be drawing and writing and reading, making up stories and drawing characters. Some of the things I liked uh, when I was in grade school, I loved comics. This was my favorite comic. Can any of you tell me the name of this comic? You know what it's called? Charlie Brown, and what is his dog's name? Do you know the dog's name? Snoopy, you're all over it. I love Charlie Brown comics. I would trace these comics and make my own Snoopy stories, uh, like in the first grade. Uh, I also love cartoons. This was my favorite cartoon on TV when I was a kid. Do you know what this cartoon is? Do you know? Yeah, Rocky and what's the moose's name? Yeah, no, this Rocky and Bullwinkle. This was my favorite cartoon. I love this. If you ever see a guy, you should totally watch it. Super funny. These dopey animals, these crazy bad guys, these silly adventures. I think a lot of the jokes from my book come from me watching Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, when I was in grade school. So I like cartoons, I like comics, but I love to read. This was my first favorite book. Can anyone tell me what this book is called? You know? Yeah. Uh, on. <coughs> this book was special to me because it was the first book that I could read by myself. And I could still totally read it all by myself. <laughs> I love the illustrations. Right, it's fun to read. It feels like you're singing when you read it. It's one of my favorite books. When I got a little older, this became my favorite book. Can one of you tell me the name of this one? Where the Wild Things Are. Can anyone tell me the name of the writer and illustrator? Go ahead. Maurice Sendak. Maurice Sendak. This is one of my favorite books. Compared to the other picture books I was reading at the time, this book's a little bit scary, a little bit sad, but it still has this kind of adventure story and really awesome monsters. So I do these monster books now. I think it all came from this book. All right, let me ask you guys the easiest question in the world. Who can tell me the difference between a writer and an illustrator? What's the difference? Perfect. The writer writes the words for the story. The illustrator draws the pictures for the story. If you're lucky, you get to do both of those things. And I'm lucky. In my books, I write and illustrate. I've done about 20 books so far. 
Uh, and I've written and illustrated 15 of those, and five of those I've just illustrated. And you guys are lucky. You get to write and illustrate your books too, right? You have this toolbox, and you have words you can use and pictures you can use. And to me, it's like a puzzle to figure out how to use those, when to use which, and how they work together. We'll kind of do a little bit of that here in a minute. I have figured out three super secret writing rules I will share with you now. I figured these out when I was like 41, so you guys are way ahead of me. The first rule when you are making up your stories um, is to have fun. This is the most important rule. And I mean two things by have fun. First, I mean write about stuff that you enjoy, right? So if you like hockey, write stories about hockey. Or if you like magic fairy princesses, write stories about magic fairy princesses. And if you like a challenge, Write a story about a team of magic fairy princesses who win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> the other thing I mean, well, the other thing I mean by have fun is share your stories. When you're writing these stories, um, don't just hide them away, but let everyone in your life read these stories, right? Your teachers, your librarians, your bus driver, your family. Share your stories with these people in your life, and then think about these people when you're writing your stories. So when you're, if you're writing a scary story, your job should be to write a story so scary that you go home and read it, and the dog hides under the bed, right? <laughs> or if your story's funny, that story should be so funny that you read it to your mom and milk shoots out of her nose. <laughs> because she laughs so hard at your funny, funny jokes, right? Think about that connection to your reader when you're writing the story. All right, the second rule is ask what if. What if is this awesome question, right? Just by asking that question, you're starting to write a story. What if I could fly? What if I could turn invisible? What if I became a giant dancing banana, right? As soon as I ask that question, you feel the story appear in your head. That was a good impression of a giant dancing banana. Um, one of my books is called Giddy Up Daddy. This is the cover. Can anyone tell me who this handsome guy on the cover of this book is? Thank you. Yes. This was me, right? My son was a baby. My daughter was a toddler. I was giving them a horsey back ride in my house. And my back was killing me. And my knees had carpet burn. And my arms were tired. And I thought, this is hard. And then I thought, oh, what if there was a dad who was so good at giving horsey rides, he thought he was a real horse, what would happen? And what would happen is uh, bandits would come to catch that horse, right? So this is the back cover of the book. These two horse wrestlers peek out uh, behind a cactus. You don't have to move this. Thing. Perfect, right? That was deft. Uh, two bandits come out to try to catch, catch the dad. So here we are early in the book, right? The kids are upstairs having breakfast, and then the dad is practicing his dressage. He's jumping over all the stuff in the backyard because he thinks he's a horse. And the two bad guys are here in the bush leaving a trail of little white cubes to catch that horse. What are they using for bait? Can you tell me? Sugar cubes. It totally works. They catch the horse. They lasso him. They stick him in the rodeo. This is later on the escape from the rodeo scene. The dad bucks the bad guys into the bullpen. The kids put on cowboy hats. They climb on his back. And the whole book is all these horsey things, right? They gallop up the road into this striking tent. What do you suppose is in that striking tent? Can you tell me? Circus. Circus, totally. There they are. They're on the high wire, right? Doing this uh, horse sack a thousand feet in the air. The bad guys who can catch them. They escape. And they find themselves outside the circus uh, playing this sport. Can anyone tell me what this sport is that they're playing? Okay. It's like croquet, but on a horse. You know? Polo. Polo, right? So all these horsey things came from that one what-if question. Uh, they escape from the polo match, and then they win the Kentucky Derby by a nose, and they gallop home in time for supper, where the mom is waiting and says, who wants an airplane ride? And then the whole thing starts over, right? Oh. And that whole book popped into my head from this little what if question. Now the third rule is the hardest rule for two reasons. One, because I have to go switch something on the computer, and I don't want to step on anyone. Uh, never give up, right? Do you guys have to rewrite the things that you write? Yeah, yeah I do. Most of my job is rewriting stuff. I write it. I finished writing it the first time, and I have not finished, I have just started. I have to rewrite over and over and over. It can get very frustrating, and um, sometimes you want to give up. Can you see the dog? Okay. So this is the book I'm working on right now. I'll give you a little sneak preview. And it's about this never give up rule. Um, it's called Can I Be Your Dog? Now, I'm working on this book now, so it's my rough sketches. They're little black and white drawings, it's kind of sloppy. I'm not worried about the details, I just want to get the story going. So here's the cover. Can I be your dog? By me. Inside, this is a picture book. In a picture book, we call the first two pages the end papers. In a lot of picture books, those end papers are just all one color. It's all purple or something. But if you're an illustrator, you can start your story early. Uh, so how did I decorate my end papers to get this story started? What did I draw? What kind of stamps? 
What are these fantastic comments? Yeah, the folks stance, and what is on the stance? Who likes these kind of stance? Can you tell me? Yeah, it's all doggy stuff, right? These are doggy stance. So I'm giving us an idea this book is going to be about dogs and males before we even get started. Oh, and I should say, this whole book started with another what if question. What if a dog could write letters? What kind of letters would a dog write? <laughs> so, here's the book. There's the title page, Can I Be Your Dog? And here's the first page. Dear people at Yellow House, look. Can I be your dog? I am potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. Also, I love to play. I see you have a cat, but I'm willing to work with you. Who's a good dog? I am. Sincerely, Arfie. P.S. I know every house on Butternut Street, but I asked you first. So there's a letter from the dog. It's going to this house, this happy yellow house. The kids are playing in the yard, there's a kitty in the tree, and down here's the mail lady delivering this letter to this house. That's the pattern we'll follow through the book. These people write back. Dear Arfie, we're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is, um, allergic to dogs. <laughs> Good luck in your search. A Honeywell family. So, my writers, how does the dog feel? How does Arfie feel after reading this? Can you tell me? Sad. Sad. Does he give up? No. no. Rule number three, never give up. He tries again. Dear butcher lady, <laughs> can I be your dog? I know every house on Butternut Street, and I think your butcher shop would be the best place for a puppy like me. I can keep the floor nice and clean. Harvey. She writes that. Look, pal, I've got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. Veronica Shane, butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dry giblets, and good luck finding a home. So Arfie eats his little snack, nom nom nom, and he's still sad, but does he give up? No. no. Dear fire station people, can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say I know my way around a fire hydrant. I've sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street, and yours is the shiniest. Arfie. He gets back a strange letter. Dear applicant. <laughs> Thank you for your interest in working with Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of fire dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes in your search, station number five. Arby's confused by this, but he knows they're not saying yes. But does he give up? No. Dear junkyard guy, I'm not going to lie. I know every house on Butternut Street, and you're my next to last place. <laughs> But these past few days have been rough. Rough, rough, rough. So please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much, and I can bark if people try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours are feet. Your mutt, get lost. I know. But does he give up? Dear last house on Butternut Street, can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds, and your windows are broken, and there's a funny smell. But I'm not picky, just lonely, Arfie. And the letter bounces back. Oops. Return to sender, nobody at this address. Now Arfie cries. But wait, what's this on the back? So this is my rough sketch, right? On the real book, this will be a colored picture, and we'll see a bright pink post-it note on the back of that envelope, inviting us to turn the page. So we'll turn the page. Dear Arfie, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first-class partner. With hugs and head scratches, Mitzi Brown, letter carrier. P.S. If you agree, meet me tomorrow morning at the big blue mailbox. Now Arfie is hopeful. The next day, Mitzi's waiting at the post office, looking, hoping. And then, boom, here comes Arfie with another letter. <laughs> and he gives her a big doggy hug, which is the best kind of hug. And we read his last letter. Dear nice lady, you know what? My tail has been wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes. Truly yours, Arfie. P.S. Wolf. And she gives him a head scratch. And in the back end papers is a map of Butternut Street. You see all the places that had said no to Arfie. Here at the bottom, Arfie and Mitzi are partners delivering the mail together forever. Happily ever after. So that's the book I'm working on right now, and that's kind of about this never give up thing. Let me switch it more time. 
when I wrote this book, I thought, oh, you know, I wrote a book, this is a book about a dog writing letters. When I finished, you can five. When I finished, I realized, oh, this is not a book about a dog writing letters. This is a book about me writing books. This is what it feels like to write these books. I pour my heart into the book, I mail it off. Most of the time, they write back and they say, no, you know, are getting lost. But they say no. Most of the time, and you have to kind of keep trying and hope you find this connection and revise and redo your work until finally it clicks and it gets turned into a book. Oh, here's the back cover. Let's see that more. Sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. Oh, well, that's the back cover. I'll be peeking out. All right. Now let's quickly move to monsters. This is what I've been working on mostly the last a few years. Notebook of Doom. How many of you are familiar with Notebook of Doom? Some of you. Um, the last few years I've been working on this series. I'll tell you quickly about it, and then we will quickly do a writing exercise and make up our own monster for the series. It's called the Notebook of Doom. It takes place in this town called Sturmont that's full of monsters. This little boy, Alexander Bach, moves to Sturmont, and in each new book there's a new kind of monster. The first book, they are called Balloon Goons. They're those big, wiggly, air-filled guys that are outside the cell phone store, you know what I mean? Those creepy things, they come alive and they suck the air out of everything. So anything inflatable becomes flat. The bike tire is flat, the pool, pool raft is flat, the whoopee cushion, the football, anything inflatable becomes flat. Those are the clues we follow if you get through the book. The next book, uh, these fish come out of the ground, right? We have a new monster for each book. Uh, then we've got uh, oops, the shadows come alive. Oh, trust me, there were shadows on that slide. Uh, then the vegetables take over the cafeteria. These are the eating vegetables. They try to cook and eat all the students, which is kind of cool. Then we've got the Pinatasaurus Rex, or the P-Rex. It's a giant pinata that says a Godzilla that tries to smash everything. How do you think you stop a giant pinata, guys? Does someone know? It hit it with a stick, right? So the kids are trying to do that in the book. But in the book, it's more complicated. They wear a blindfold and they spin around three times, and then they're trying to stop this monster. All right. Uh, then we've got a bubble wrap mummy. And then uh, this one is like a lightning bug. It's a giant electric bug that can zap you. So each new book, we come up with a specific monster, right? Uh, and then I'll in the book, we see the monsters are, this is the porcupine. It's a porcupine with forks in effect. We describe the monster's habitat, its diet, its behavior, sort of like in science class when you talk about animals. We think about all those parts and apply it to a monster. Uh, so let's do that now. Let's make a little monster. Um, if you want to switch the thing, you can. We're done with the screen. Thank you. So we're going to work together on this. Can you hear me if I shout like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to draw a little bit. Oops. I'm going to set a trap here. Okay. I need a volunteer to help me with something. You guys are all writers. Can you come up and help me with this first part? So when I write these, when I make these books, um, you can sort of draw a monster by just adding monster parts and make it have claws and fangs and horns and wings and all that. And that's fine, but it's kind of generic. I think the stories work better when we get really specific, right? Like a pinata monster. If I want you to help me come up, you can get out of the light there, sorry. I have created this tool to help me. It's a wheel of mystery. It has all these categories on it. So we're going to spin this wheel, and it's going to tell us what kind of monster we're going to make. Go ahead, get in the world. Whoops. How's that? So, let's see. How's it going? All right. The first category is... A bug. Tell me some kind of a bug, please. A cockroach. Thank you. You can have some. Here, here, come up. Give me a spin. You can just do it right here. A cockroach, right? I'll give it a spin, please. So do you guys remember the Pinatasaurus Rex? We combined two things, a T-Rex and a pinata. We're going to do the same thing here. A cockroach and something else. I don't know what it's going to be. None of us know. We're going to see if it works and try to make it into a book. And what do we have? What do we have? A toy. Some kind of a toy. Oh, you can tell me. Any kind of a toy. A toy truck, did you say? Okay, good. So we're going to combine it. A cockroach and a toy truck, right? Um, the first thing we as writers can do is brainstorm. So let's brainstorm a little bit. Tell me something about cockroaches, right? Oops. Uh, I have a ball here. Can I pick something out of the Cockroach. Tell me about cockroaches. What do we know about cockroaches, my writers? They're gross, right? Art will be gross, definitely. Gross. What else about cockroaches? They're a bug, right? So what does it mean if they're a bug? What do we know about them because they're bugs? Can you tell me? They have what? Legs? How many legs? 
Do you know? You guys know? You're my brain for How many? Six legs, okay, good. Six legs. They're bugs. Tell me something else about cockroaches. Yes. Ugly. Ours will be ugly. This could be a monster. They're hard to crush. They have this like shell, right? They have this exoskeleton. Uh, good. Exoskeleton. Tell me one more thing about cockroaches. They have antenna, right? If we draw it, we're going to make sure we have the antenna. So normally we would brainstorm a lot longer. We'd go do research here. We'd look at pictures in the library and look at books. This will be good enough for now. Tell me about trucks. I know we all know about trucks, but let's go through the motions. Tell me about trucks. They're big, right? Ours will be big, definitely. What else about trucks? Four wheels, is that what you said, yep? Four wheels. Unless it's like a big truck, it could have, you know, four wheels, yep. Windows. What else about trucks? Go ahead. Has an engine, right? When we think about sensory details, we know a truck is nearby. How do we know a truck is nearby even if we can't see it? Can you tell me? It's loud. What else? It's, it's made of metal, yeah. Um, it can be loud, right? And you can also sometimes smell the exhaust, right? So we all know that about trucks. We think about everything we know about trucks. We look at a lot of pictures. We're doing the quick version here. Cockroach and truck. So the next thing I would do is doodle. Um, I would quickly draw a little cockroach. Right. There's a little cockroach. And now I draw a little truck. Okay, good. We have a truck. So we have a truck, we have a cockroach. Now we're going to combine these to make our character and our story, right? This is the first time anyone's done this. We are the first people in history, I think, to make a cockroach truck monster thing. Uh, so we look for things in common, right? So I think we probably keep that shell. I could probably have the truck bag, but maybe the wind too close to the back. Uh, the right. Let's see, and then the wings are here. It's got a bed, it's got wings. Um, maybe it's got six legs. One, two, three. The bottom of each leg is a wheel. Right? All right. This is where I would start, right? Okay, I would start with this. We have this truck bug. It's a metal thing. It's got this shell that can come up like wings. It's got antenna. But it's also got uh, six legs and it's got some wheels, right? Now we've got this very specific monster that we're going to build our story around. If this were a new notebook of Doom Bug, um, it, this thing tells me all about the book, right? Tell me how this thing behaves. How does it get around? Tell me how it moves. It can drive around. It can roll. How else can it? Can you tell me? It can fly. The little shell opens and the wings come out. It can fly around. Um, good. What do you think it likes to eat? Let's talk about the diet of this creature. It likes to eat oil. It's part truck, so maybe it needs oil or fuel or gas, right? Diesel. Diesel. And what about the bug part? What would a, what would a bug like to eat? I don't know what cockroaches like to eat. Tell me something they might like to eat. You know? Apples, or maybe like trash would leave on the floor, crumbs. So maybe this thing would either eat crumbs or fuel. We play with those ideas. Um, and let's talk about setting. Where would you run into a creature like this? A junkyard, right? We need all of our parts of the story to connect. So we can't set this in a volcano, that doesn't make sense, but a junkyard makes a lot of sense. We have the trash where the roaches are, we have the junk from the old cars, so our story should take place in a junkyard. How do you stop, this needs a bumper, right? And we need a tailpipe. How do you stop a um, truck roach? Tell me how to stop it. What is it to eat this, right? Tell me. Oh, bugs spray? Yeah, we can, bug, we can spray this bug, right? If it's a bug, we spray it, and that stops it. If we're going to spray it to save the day, that tells us who the main character in our story could be. It needs to be somebody who has access to bugs. <coughs> who can our main character be if we're going to spray it? <coughs> you know what that's called, that job? Do you know? An exterminator. One route is we have an exterminator save the day by spraying this bug. But how do you stop it? the truck cap? How do we stop the truck monster? Do you have an idea? Do you know? <coughs> We can make it run out of gas, so we can have a race. Our last track that might be any 500 or some uh, race track to get this thing to run out of gas. How else could you destroy it? Who haven't I called one? You tell me. Yeah. We can pop the tires, right? So if we're in a junkyard, maybe our good guy leaves something sharp to pop the tires. Was your hand up? Did you have an idea? I was going to say spike strip. You're going to say spike strip. Perfect. Any other ways? One more. Both of you, one at a time. Take the keys. Drive, you can't drive without the keys. 
slip, we set a trap, we put something slippery down and make it slip, right? And if it eats oil, maybe we leave oil on the ground and it's going after the oil. So the pool, one more. Take the engine out, right? Mess up the engine or give it some bad fuel. The point is, all these little parts connect, right? The good guy in our story, kind of the goal in our story, the setting and this creature, all of the little parts connect. This is something you guys can go back and do when you write your stories. Um, one of you, you get with a friend, one of you writes cockroach, one of you writes truck on a piece of paper, you trade and you make up a story about the truck roach. One of you writes robot, one of you writes taco, and you make a story about the taco bot, right? You can do this over and over and over again. It's super fun, and you have written, right? I like to think about writing, there's two parts to writing. The part where you come up with the ideas, and then the part where you write it all down. So we're just doing the part where we're playing with ideas. We're not worried about spelling and sentences and grammar and all that. We're just playing with the ideas. So this is, I guess, where I will leave you. Um, go play this game with your friends and see where it goes. It's much more fun to write with a partner than it is by yourself. And I guess that's it. I'm going to be around later tonight. I can't wait to see the awards. Uh, but if you have a book you want me to sign or have questions for me about writing and stuff, please come by later. And I'm happy to chat with any and all of you. Okay, well thanks guys. <laughs>